investing journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN Educating Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, I've been asked to take a look at the NASDAQ. You can see here, uh, this is basically 20 stocks, and uh, they've exploded to the upside here. We've taken out the highs of the 14th of October. I mean, that's really a big deal, right? If we look at this on the longer-term scale, 48 hours, you can see here, we've taken that out, all right? Now, that would have suggested that we were going to get to 208 because we went and we might still because you see we had this this pattern here was yesterday all right there's where it is right here okay now we did take that high out now we only made to the 786 in this s p 382 in the uh russell and 382 in the dow jones but this one actually took that high out from back in october it did not take out the big high that was, move it up here, which was way, 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 way back here. See, we did not take that high out as of yet. Now, we still could, but we'll see. Part of this reasoning, of course, is one of the stocks that we looked at and we do almost every day is Tesla. And it had that monster move on the daily. Just get this up here so we can see it. Just to show you the importance of these numbers, folks. There was your 382, excuse me, your 61% retracement. We were saying this was the place to buy it. But, you know, folks, you're coming into earnings. The only way you could buy something like this is to buy a call and risk that call premium because this thing could have gone the other way like it did here. You know, you don't want to get caught in something like that. So the only way you can do that is by using the options market. And that's why they can be very, very powerful. They have short dated options, so you can use something like that. Okay, I made a comment yesterday about Elon Musk and how close we were. Folks, I hope you realize that uh, Elon and I are not as close as we thought. I, I tried to take him under my wing. I better keep teasing about this or I'm going to hear about it. Uh, folks, I'm joking about that. I've never met the man. I've never seen him in person. It was just a joke. Okay. Anyway, it would be nice if he would have told us down here, but I never have gotten a, a uh, what do you call a uh, tip that ever worked. Okay, so that's that. All right. Now, uh, that's part of the reasons for this big jumping. Look at this, folks. This means that 30% uh, of that, this has moved, this has moved 30%, folks, 30% in two days. 30% in two days. That is a huge move. Now, if we look at this on the long term weekly, let's see where we are. Probably pretty close to the old highs. No, no, the old highs are way. Oh, the old highs are way, way back here. This way, well, that's the split. So, the only way I can look at this now. Yeah, never mind. Anyway, this is. It looks like we want to be going higher. So we'll just wait and see. Forget that. Now I've been asked to to look at Apple, and then I want to cover one other thing that we have here. Oh, we had another really nice trade earlier this morning. I wanted to bring that to your attention too. April. Uh, Apple. Okay. Here's Apple. We'll get it up here so we can see it right here. It should be breaking into new high ground. No, it's bouncing off that 382 though. There was a 382 yesterday. That was off the low telling it it was actually pretty good, and we've rallied pretty nicely off that. We went from 28, that's up about four bucks, so doing pretty much what it is. Now we're looking at a potential one, three, five pattern here, one, three, five, as we look at that. All right, now I wanted to bring to your attention one of those that we were looking at this morning for a trade. These were the trades that we had set up before the day started, and we were looking at the live cattle. And we were looking at the December live cattle. And I want to get up here. What we did is we went down to a small time frame to show you what we were watching. There, as you can see, there was our price objective right here, folks. <laughs> it, it came within 10 cents of our exact price and dropped $500. We didn't get filled. 
but there was a number that we were looking for right there, 60 to 54. That's 15 bucks or 70 bucks in cattle. And it made, with that little ABCD pattern right here, that would have made pretty close to, to our objective of 500. And if you look at this, you'll see that from a high, look where it stopped, boys and girls. Look where it stopped. See that little number right there? That's old 0.382. Boy, in these strong trending markets, you just have to pay really close attention to it. Look at it. It stays here, folks, for an hour and then goes right back up again. Okay, let's move on to one other thing. And this is look at cattle on the long term daily because it's got this monster pattern coming up in here, folks. This is. This is up another four cents in cattle. This would be all time. We're in. We're almost in all time highs already, but if we get up here, this is going to be a monster because this is going to take four months up. And uh, boy, watch this one because this is a. Uh, that's a take me to, take me to the church on time on this one, folks. At about one ninety three, up about four cents from, uh, th excuse me, three cents, f four cents from where we are, uh, three to four cents from where we are, uh, right now. I'm a little bit. Uh, a little bit uh, tired right now after doing that long session. Okay, now we get rid of the cattle and we get rid of the apple. And we also, uh, there's Tesla, we got to get rid of that. And there's a NASDAQ and we don't need to see that anymore. And all we'll do now is focus here on the, uh, the S&P 500 because this is when the show started. We were talking about the possibility. This is today's action, okay? now. This is where we were yesterday, and this is what we were discussing. All we did is we went down to a smaller time frame, okay? And what we wanted to do is to see what there was a low yesterday. You remember that low? That was the 61% retracement of the big low on the daily. Remember, 5,800? Now, since that time, we made the high up here. That was contract high on the 17th. We came down for six days, up for three days. Now, what what did it doubt? What did the S Let's do it with 20 minutes so we can see it clear and make it a lot easier. There's what I want you to see. Okay. Okay, here's where we were looking at this morning. This is this is when the show started. This was the open, folks. This is the open of the stock exchange uh, right here. Okay. And now we're starting, as you can see, it's starting to come down. Uh, right now, it's starting to come down. Here was the key spot, folks, that we told everybody to watch. That spot right there. Now, it's only an hour rally, one hour rally, but that was important when you're short term trading, all right? Because if you're watching these numbers like we watch, you'll see that when they do work, and they, remember these are short term, there is your exact 3A2. Now, that, folks, this, is, this took four hours. To get to 40, 58, 43, four hours. But here was the key. This spot right here was the key right there. Let me show you why. All we're going to do now is we're going to move down to a smaller time frame. We're going to go down to four minute. And you'll see it right there. You see that spot right there? I said watch for this next retracement that we get, which will be 382 off of the high. There's the high right here. And there is the exact 382. We are now uh, 1,650, well, 120. It's $1,000 ahead right now on that trade right there. We set that up before it ever happened, and it worked uh, okay. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. Hey, we're going to take a break. We're going to talk about some uh, currencies and some soybeans and a few other little tidbits. Stan Harley is our guest. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters 
letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, we'll switch over to the currencies here. This is the four hour chart of the British pound. We've been short this since up here. We had a couple places to add, and uh, you'll notice here that uh, this was the uh, 382 of this move right here. But there's the 382 off of the high right there. Now, all we've done is we've had a two day rally. We were expecting to see a two day rally. You can see if you just measure this ABCD. Remember, this took two weeks to form, folks. Two weeks, A, B, C, D, came down 200 points, and look all it's been able to do. It's just barely rallying, and all we're going to do is blow it up so you can see it, and we're going to check and see how close that came to the 382 rally right back here. Well, today's high was between the two of them um, off of that high right here, so it was a little above it. We can see we're below it uh, right now. Now, also, if you remember, when we were on the air, we were looking at the Australian dollar. That trade worked out okay, but it wasn't an easy one to do. Let's get the four hour up so we can quick look at it. See, it's already given up the ghost. I, <laughs> I'll tell you folks, <laughs> this is this is really, look at this. There was the ABCD right here. Rallies for a day, We rally, it rallies about 400 bucks. Stopped at the 382 of the previous high right here. And look at it now. I wish I would have seen this one on the show today, but we did four trades, so that was enough. But there was the same thing here. It just started to move lower and lower and lower and lower. This is a good sign. It means the U.S. dollar still holding up really strong. So let's take a look at that U.S. dollar. Stan Harley will be our guest, folks, so stay tuned. He's uh, He's been traveling, and he's spent some time with us here in Tucson, and we're going to take a look at it. Here's the dollar index on the four, four, on a four-hour. Look at this, folks. Look at the, the the slight little retracements. Look at this, the little tiny retracements you get right here. Let's just look at it. It's four hours, so this is over several days. Okay, this is the last several days action. So we pull back here. Now, this is a, a pretty big correction, folks, just about uh, three-quarters of a point in the Dow Index. So that's going to be – one of these is going to be the 382. So let's just follow it up because 
in strong trending markets, you're going to need something like this, okay? There's your first 382. Went a little bit below it. There's your next one. So when you see a new high, you just go to the next one and then pull it up and see didn't quite make it there, didn't quite make it there, didn't quite make it there. You see, it, it just – it gives you so little to get in on, okay? Now, let's go to the high and see where we came today. Now, it didn't make anything here, but as you can see here, I'm going to bring uh, – well, the, boy, the S&P might not even be up on the day here pretty soon, folks. This thing's giving up the ghost here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're below – well, we're down over 100 and some points. We're making new lows in the Dow Jones, boys and girls. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I, you know, oh boy, guess what's coming now, boys and girls, look at this, there's your 382 right here, let's just see where we're going to stand, we, we better stop right here, or we are in big trouble, big trouble, just a minute, I got to put this up here, got to stop right here, folks, this is why this beeper's going on, and if we get much below here, that tells us that we are going to be with... Two and a half hours to go if it keeps doing this. Uh, we could be in big trouble, and it looks like it's headed down. But there's your 382 off of that, and uh, now we should stop right here. That's why it's got to stop. That's why we're looking at it right now. Below here, nasty, nasty, McDasty. If it gets below that, not too good. Let's get back to something that I understand. That is the currencies. Not as much so as you might think. Come up here and take a look at the euro. And here's the euro, and then we have to do the Japanese yen also. And you can see there's that monster rally we had in the euro. <laughs> Hello, operator. That didn't go anywhere, did it? What did it do? It was a pretty good rally, folks. It was the biggest rally since the end of September. Believe it or not, that right here, this rally right here, was the biggest rally that it's had since September. Look at that. See that? There's the rally right there, okay, roughly. None of these rallies were even close to anything like that. You see that? So that's got to be a 382 off of something back here. I don't know which one you'd pick, but this was the longest, longest one. So let's use that. that it rallied the longest of any of them, which been right here. So let's just see if that came in at the 382 of that. Nope, nothing there either. There's a little rally here that might have done this one. But, boy, they're not easy to find. There it is right there. That's this this rally lasted several uh, days, okay, two days. This one lasted three days, and this one lasted three days, and it stopped at the 382 of that move right there. And if you back it up and move it up just a little bit more, you'll see where we were on the high of the 21st, which cleaned this out a little bit so you can make it a little bit cleaner here. You'll see from your high down to your low, you stopped just about at the uh, 61. You went a little bit below it, and now still coming down uh, pretty good. Okay, it's really important, folks, <laughs> right here. Really important we hold this low. And we don't hold this low. And we've already broken it in the NASDAQ, or excuse me, we've broken it in the Dow Jones. We've almost broken it in the uh, Russell. And uh, if we get below that, uh, oh, dear. Near me, but this is important right there. There, that's that A B C D stopped exactly right there. Plus, let's get back to the old hourly chart. You'll see the low that we made yesterday was an exact this low, this low right here. Wow, let's look how much this has given up here. Just this little little bit here. Wow, shut the front door. There's your 61 percent. Uh, I got to bear with me here, folks. Uh, there's the 61 percent retracement off the big move. Okay. All right, then we make an A, B, C, D up. Now, remember, the Dow Jones is broken below this substantially. So, uh, so that's a sign that something's not right. But we've held this low right here. Now, I want to just move this over just a little bit because we need to go back and take this stuff out and just look at the hourly half-hour chart so we can see the last hours that we want to watch. That's what we want to be watching. The low that we made just now, just now, was right there, right on that money. That's when we start getting below here. It's really negative. And the reason why is you've got, let's just blow this up. This is just looking at it for today. There's your ABCD stopped right at the 1.618 expansion, right there at that number. You get below here, you're going to go, you get below here, folks, you're going to see something this coming weekend that you're not going to believe. I don't know what's going to happen, but 
the stock market's going to flat come unglued. I know that's 60 handles away from uh, where we are right now, folks, but we, we've taken 40, we've taken 50 of those handles already in uh, the matter of two and a half hours with uh, three hours to go. So we start getting below here. That's where the real problem lies. The Dow Jones has already said I got a big problem. The Russell says I've got a big problem. The Nasdaq, not so much. Anyway, that's what we got going. We've got our main man, Mr. Stan Harley, coming up, and we want to cover one other stock, and I'll get it up here, and that's Federal Express. They ship all the packages out, and you'll see that it's been a pretty good rally. Let's get the daily up here now. And, uh, well, we rallied up. Let's see if we've made the 382 off of the big move here from a high down to your low. And there it is today, right up here at the 382. Hey, we'll be right back, boys and girls. 877, stay tuned for Stan Harley, 877-929. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. This portion of Trade What You See is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
Okay, we're back, folks. Without further ado, the star of the show is on the air now, Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letter. How are you, my friend? I'm doing just awesome, Larry. Just awesome. I love uh, you with your Ivy League shirt on. Is that from the Arizona Cardinals? Is that why you're wearing their color combinations today? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. Of course. <laughs> yes. Yes. Go ahead, uh, my friend. They're waiting to hear what you have to say. I've heard nothing but uh, where is Stan? Where is Stan? So please continue. <laughs> Well, as, as you talked about a little, little, just a few moments ago, um, you and I, the four of us, you and your lovely wife, Sarah, and Gigi and I had a really nice dinner in Tucson, Arizona when I was back there visiting a couple of weeks ago. It was great to see you again. It sure was, yes. You're looking good, my friend. Um, Feeling good. Let's, let's, let's just jump into things here. I want to spend some quality time on this today. I'm going to go a little bit more slowly. I know we got about a half an hour and a couple of breaks, but my theme has been for quite a while that this stock market is evolving towards what I believe is going to be a major top. And I've identified the second week in November for what, more than a year now on your show. Uh, and I still maintain that. And I'm going to share with you the reasons why I believe that is the case. Uh, let's look at the yearly data, first of all. Um, I have data that I acquired uh, from the Foundation for the Study of Cycles uh, going back to the very first day of trading in 1602 in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And uh, I'm probably one of very few people that has that data. Uh, but what I've done here in this chart is I have uploaded the data into the program built by the Foundation for the Study of Cycles. Uh, that is a nonprofit organization that looks at cyclical phenomena throughout nature. There's a great interest, of course, in the financial markets, but that's not the only thing they look at. Uh, they're a scientific-based research or organization that looks at cyclical phenomena throughout nature and, and human endeavors. Uh, my, my particular interest and your particular interest and those watching this program, of course, is financial markets. So. What I have done is I've un uploaded the yearly data into their cycle analyzer program. And what the program does is it does some significant calculations and it determines the dominant cyclical waveforms in the data series. And uh, as you can see over here on the, on the right side where I have my, my cursor, the program ranks one, two, and three as the dominant cycles based on the algorithm within the program. The dominant cycle, it says, is 92 years. And you can see the idealized waveform of this cycle going all the way back to 1602. And the latest peak in the cycle was due right over here. We're past. Now, what the cycles program does is it analyzes trough to trough sequences. And with an idealized sinusoidal waveform, it assumes the top is right in the midpoint between the two troughs. Of course, that's not how it works in the real world. We tend to get either right or left translation, depending on whether we are in a bull or a bear market. But nevertheless, it's a very good tool for assessing the cyclical phenomena in, in the markets. I've done my own an analysis separate from what the Foundation for the Cycles Study of Cycles program has done. And this is a chart I've shared on the air uh, with you and, and the viewers uh, on a number of occasions. And uh, I look at a lot of Fibonacci and Lucas relationships. And what I have found is the latter tend to be very, very powerful tools in forecasting how markets move, particularly from crest to crest, i.e. high to high, or from low to low. Now let's look at the data series from 1602 through the present. This is the same data as in the prior chart, but what I've done here is uh, perform my own Fibonacci slash Lucas analysis of the data. From 1602, which is when trading began in Amsterdam to the first peak, was 47 years. That was in 1649. Well, up here I've put a little table of the Lucas numbers 18, 29, and 47. You can see good old Lucas 47, and it forecasted that top right to the year. The next 
subsequent tops, or I should say major tops, I'm going to skip one for the moment, we had a top in 1835 in the United States, we had a top in 1929 in the U.S. Those were separated by Lucas either multiplied by 2, 94, or Lucas multiplied by Lucas 47 multiplied by 4, which is 188. Then uh, 1720, we had another peak, which happened to be 0 0.382, 0 0.618 times that 188 year time span, and it lined up pristinely with 1720. Incidentally, that happened to be a Lucas number 18 times 4, 72 years, and a Lucas um, 29 times 4, 116 years from the 1835 top. Uh, 1720, interestingly, my great-great-grandfather to the 10th, Lord Robert Harley, was uh, involved in that what became known as the South Sea Bubble. Great Britain had been, and, and the Netherlands had been at war with France and Spain. And at the conclusion of the war, uh, he negotiated the treaty, the Treaty of Utrecht, and also uh, took the debt, the war debt that the British government had acquired, and took it into private hands and put it into a company called the South Sea Company and traded it in the free market on the London Stock Exchange. And the wow. shares skyrocketed, uh, literally skyrocketed into a major peak in 1720 and then collapsed. Uh, major crash in the London Stock Exchange. A lot of people, including Isaac Newton, who was at the time a brilliant man, uh, lost a lot of money. And my, sadly, my great, great, great grandfather uh, was sacked from his position, he was uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer, um, which would be the equivalent in Britain, which would be the equivalent today, would be Secretary of the Treasurer and um, Chairman of the Federal Reserve, kind of all rolled into one. So he was the number one financier for the British government. Well, he unfortunately wow. uh, got fired from his job because the stock market collapsed. Not his fault, but you know how it goes. <laughs> doesn't make any difference. They got to play. Yeah, it doesn't. Somebody. Yeah, the man at the top <laughs> gets uh, gets his head whacked off. Uh, anyway, you can l listeners can uh, Google South Sea Bubble or Great Lord Robert Harley and and read more about that in detail. Okay, hey, we'll be right back with Stan Harley, folks. Stay with us, Stan. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. 
Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. We're back, folks. Speaking with Stan Harley, please continue, my friend. Absolutely, Larry. Well, we've looked at the yearly data. Let's let's drill down. Let's look at the monthly data. Uh, what I've done here is I have uploaded monthly data of the Dow Jones Industrials into the Foundation for the Study of Cycles Cycle Scanner program. And what the program has determined is the dominant cycle from a relative strength perspective is one that spans 41 months. This cycle has been around for decades. Uh, Edward R. Dewey, the creator of the Foundation with the Study of Cycles back in the 1940s found this cycle and wrote extensively about it in, in his works. And it's still prevalent even today. And one can see the cyclical scan that the program produces of the idealized waveform of this cycle based on the analysis of the data going back uh, many, many years. And it says the top in this cycle is due right now, right now. <laughs> Well, it's happening I, now. <laughs> let's, uh, let's drill this down a little further here. Um, I've taken the same monthly data, put it into a spreadsheet, and applied my Fibonacci eyeballs to it. And this is something that we've talked about in the past, but I'm going to repeat it again. Um, what I have found is the dominant peaks emanating from the major bottom in December of 1974 span 150 months and the Fibonacci ratios of 150 months. So for example, from the December 74 low into the August 1987 high, 150 months. Another 150 months later, produced the high in 2000. And then we had some Fibonacci perturbations of that 150 month cycle, which all lined up pristinely with every single market high. Every single one, 100%. And what I've done is I've dumped all those data points into a spreadsheet, and I've done a regression analysis of the data. And my regression analysis says the cycle length is 149.73, rounded to 150 months. And the standard deviation on that, look at that. Standard deviation is less than one month. That's over a span of 50 plus years, 50 years. And the idealized recurrence of that cycle is due in December of 2024 with a standard deviation of one month. Wow. Let's take a look at the weekly data. Um, I've taken the weekly data of the S&P 500 and put it into a spreadsheet and analyzed it. And I found something very interesting. Uh, that is 
looking left and right from the March 2000 high in the S&P, looking both left and right, every single peak of the major peaks can be defined by a Lucas number multiplied by two within about two to four weeks. So for example, between the March 2000 high and the October 2007 high, that time span was 398 weeks. Look up here to my table, you can see a Lucas number 199 times two is 398. And it was three, it was, I misspoke, it was 394 weeks, but the operable function is 398. Then again, for the high in May of 2015, and so on. You can see that each of the peaks align within two to four weeks of being exactly a Lucas number times two. Now, the last one occurred in January of 2022. If the pattern continues, we should be looking towards Lucas number 76 times two, which is 152 weeks. And that puts us in the range of the week of November 5 to November 12, plus or minus. Standard deviation is 2.667 weeks. So what does this tell me? This says November 15th, that week, look for another major high with a standard deviation of about 2.6, 2.7 weeks. We're in zone now. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, your okay. turn. If we have time, and if yeah, the yeah, music we got starts, time. okay, Please, if the music we'll starts, time. and I don't, yeah, I don't <laughs> catch ahead. it, let me know. Uh, let's look at the very short term to see what's going on. Uh, we've got some divergences developing. Uh, we've got, for example, the S and P and the Nas Comp today. Uh, not the S and P, the Nas Comp. The Nas Comp went to a intraday new all-time high, just barely. Not the NDX not the QQQs, as you pointed out in this show earlier in the hour. Um, the Dow Jones Industrials have not gone to a new high. The Dow Transports have not gone to a new high. The New York Composite has not gone to a new high. Mm. Okay, file that away for right now. Uh, let's look at the very, very short term. And going back uh, about a year here, what I've done here with uh, another cycles program I have these lines are spaced at 21 trading day intervals. And take note, we've got a low here, we've got a low here, a low here, a low here. Basically within two to three days of 21 trading days, a low has occurred. When's the next one due? Ooh, about two to three days from now. So my, my message is this, we are basically chopping sideways, faces the S&P and the NAS, we're going a little bit lower basis of the Dow and the New York comp, but we should be making a 21 day cycle low here very, very shortly. I would say early part of next week. Actually, we're in zone now. We're, we're in zone now. So it could be today, could be Monday, Tuesday, very, very close to a 21 day low. Okay, file that one away for the moment. When I upload the daily data, uh, into the cycles program. The foundation for the study of cycles program determines the number one cycle based on its algorithm is 80 trading days. And what the cycles program does is it produces a plot of the idealized waveform of this cycle. And as you can see, it's suggesting an 80 day cycle high is due in the next few days, coming very, very soon. Okay. File that one away for the moment. I've taken the same day, the same data, put it into a spreadsheet, and going back several years, I find the dominant highs are occurring at, oh my gosh, yes, 80 trading days, just like the cycles program says. That's what my computations show. And I did this analysis several months ago, back in April, I believe, and I haven't updated it, but at the time, I said the next high was due around July 18th. What happened? We got a high in the S&P on the 16th and the Dow put in a high on the 18th of July. Then we sold off, as you can see. And the subsequent high, my analysis points to the November 8th timeframe. Mm -hmm. Wow, uh, well, and that's incredible work. There's the music, I hear it. 
Yeah, stay with us. We're going to stay out for a little bit more. We're going to tell the folks how to reach you and uh, invite you back to Tucson anytime. Stay with us, Dan. Thank you very much. Dan Harley, Harley Stock Market Letters. Stay tuned, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. We're back, folks, with Stan Harley. Stan, do you uh, have uh, an opinion on the gold market? I, I do. I didn't bring any charts on the gold market today, but I well, think you just we are, tell us what you think, pal. That's yeah, good enough I, yes, for us. I do. I think we are very close to a cyclical high in gold. Um, gold tends to make spike tops and rounded bottoms. Um, it. Uh, I've also found some very interesting Lucas time relationships on the monthly chart that converge right in the present time frame, and we're up around the 2750 area. Um, I've got some Fibonacci work that points to some resistance right in here. Uh, and last but not least, uh, there is a 94-month cycle um, that has characterized all of the lows going back the last 50, 60 years. Um, uh, I put all that together. Uh, I, I think we are very, very close to a cyclical high in gold. Well, that's good. Listen, I want to thank you for joining us. If you folks want to reach him, it's uh, Harley Stock Market Letter. We'll have you on again soon, and not too many vacations anymore, pal. We need you to be here. 
<laughs> how, how was the wedding? I, Everything go okay? I, I, doing fine. Doing fine. Yes. Good. Uh, Good. I just want to make one one summary comment. Uh, sure. Final highs are normally associated with divergences. Normally, not always, but normally. If we do get a final high here in a couple of weeks, I think the pullback we're getting now will produce those divergences at the final high. So, for example, okay. you might see the the S and P and the Nasdaq go to a new high. Maybe not. Certainly not the transports. Maybe not the New York Composite. Um, maybe not the QQQs. I don't know. I don't know. Some combination thereof. But well, I would good. expect some divergences between now and uh, and that second week in November. Well, I'll be watching those divergences daily too, for sure. So be, have a good time, my friend, and may Thank live you. every day in an attitude of gratitude. May God bless. We'll see you Monday, folks. <laughs>